Ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna bring you here now to the stage right now. I wanted to bring this man out, man. Listen, he's a good friend of mine, one of the funniest guys I know. It's an honor for me to bring him on stage tonight. Make some noise for the very funny Mr. David Arnold. <laughs> Kevin, I'm gonna need you to bring this mic back up to regular people's size. <laughs> I asked you to introduce me, nigga, not do Let Me Explain Seven. <laughs> I mean, how much more does this nigga need? I mean, right? <laughs> Let me just try out my shit on your night. <laughs> So when it fucked up, then, you know, I just go back to my crib. And good luck to you. <laughs> Hollywood ass niggas. Give it up one more time for Kevin Hart, all the people y'all see. <laughs> this is a comedian's favorite time of day right here. This is it. This is work. This is what I've been waiting for all day. Do you understand, like, comics, we, I have no job. <laughs> no, seriously, like, I put this on at 8 o'clock this morning, I've been in the back waiting for y'all to get here. <laughs> I have nothing to do, you understand? <laughs> but that's why people don't respect comedians. If you don't know us, you don't respect the journey that we go through. You understand? Expect, like, I'm, I just bought a house out in Porter Ranch, which is up in Northridge, okay? I live around all white people and Asians. All right, and this is the thing about living around white people. White people want to know who their neighbors are. You know what I'm saying? They want to know you. They want to know what you're doing there. Black people, we not like that. Black people, we see each other, we're like, yeah, I'll see you over there. You keep your ass over there. I'll stay over here. If some shit happens, we'll come to the middle of the street and talk about it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Other than that, you keep it fucking moving. You hear me? Now, white, white people want to know why you're there. They want, to, they want to know what you do for a living that you can afford to live where I live. <laughs> so when I first moved to town, right, when I first moved to the neighborhood, you know, I got no job. So I'm outside on the porch every morning seeing everybody off the work. <laughs> I'm just standing there, all right now, take care, have a nice day. <laughs> they come back eight hours later, I'm still standing there, welcome back. <laughs> How was your day? And you can see it killing him. Like, what the fuck is he doing over here? <laughs> Nothing. I remember the little, little white lady across the street came over and talked to me. One and only time. She came over and talked to me. And they always want to lead up to the what do you do for a living question. Right? And you know, I'm a comedian. Nothing gives me more pleasure than making you uncomfortable. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so she, come, she comes over. She's like, so, welcome to the neighborhood. I'm like, oh, thanks, white lady. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, so, what do you do? And I'm like, me? I said, we. <laughs> now, my wife, who is the most conservative woman ever, right? My wife is so, ah, 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 that's my wife. I don't suck dick, ah, that's my wife, right? <laughs> Not since college, oh my God, okay, that's my wife. My wife immediately tries to clean up my shenanigans, right? She's like, no, he doesn't. He is not selling weed. He is a comedian. Now, every time my wife tells somebody I'm a comedian, nobody ever thinks she means I'm literally a comedian. So inevitably, every woman will always say, oh, my husband's funny too, right? <laughs> and I'm looking at her like, no, bitch, I'm really funny, okay? It's a whole different kind of funny than what you doing, you know what I'm saying? Thing. Me and my wife, we get into it constantly about what I do. Because I don't have no traditional nine to five. You know, like if you ain't at the job upset and miserable, then you must not have no real job. You know what I'm saying? My wife, oh, she quick to go, everything's not a joke, David. Right? And I'm like, uh, all this shit in the house says it is. <laughs> Oh, 
<laughs> we didn't do it. Con it's a continuing, ongoing argument about what my role around the house should be. What my definition of help is. You understand? The other day she said, can you help me wash the dishes? I said, no. She said, why can't you do this? I said, I bought a dishwasher. That's me helping. Every time you press that button and it lights up, guess what? That's all me. The other day I asked her, I said, where's the iron? She said, I don't know. Not, I don't know, let me help you look for it. I don't know, I don't give a damn. And good luck ironing whatever the hell you need to iron. That attitude don't work for me, you understand? Because we got two jobs in this house. My job is to inject money in the house. Her job is to run the house. And a part of running the house is knowing where the goddamn iron is, you understand? <laughs> Now, if you want to go out in society and get a check and bring it in the house, then we both can walk around here not knowing where the fuck the iron is. <laughs> <laughs> but as long as I'm making all the money, I need you to know where the goddamn iron is. You know <laughs> every day, every day, we are into it. I, see, this is the thing too. We know how to, we know how to piss each other off. Because if you don't know, marriage is the most passive-aggressive relationship you will ever be a part of. Am I lying? It is, because when you're married, you got to find a way to say fuck you without saying fuck you. Right? You have to. Like, let me tell you how my wife does to me. She'll go out and buy all my favorite breakfast cereals, but won't buy no milk. <laughs> Nothing says fuck you like a dry ass bone of Lucky John. I'm eating them like they're sunflowers. Ain't no milk in the house. <laughs> she messing with me. But I know how to get, let me tell you something. I know how to get her back. Guys, you want to piss your woman off? Let her see you rested. <laughs> Am I lying? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing pisses a woman off like a man at rest. You understand me? I don't give a damn what you did all day. You could have built an ark. You could have put out a forest fire. <laughs> When she walk in the house, your ass better be in motion. You understand? <laughs> That's why when I'm at home, I keep a tool belt strapped on me at all times. As soon as she walk in, I jump up and measure anything. I'm like, <laughs> huh? No, I can't do that. I'm about to put a jacuzzi on the stove. Respect what I'm doing, oh. <laughs> They don't respect nothing you're doing. And it's amazing because nobody puts together a to-do list like women. Nobody. Y'all are the ones who created the list. The first list ever came from Eve to Adam. Do you know this? She put all shit, name, name the animals, bring us something to eat, all kind of shit on his list. He put one thing on her list. Don't fuck with that tree. The bitch couldn't do it. <laughs> let, me let, me, let me tell you how long we've been married. Let me tell you how long we've been married. Just how long we've been married. We had our last physicals together. Exactly, damn. I said, I'm going, to have, I'm going to get my physical. She said, oh, make me an appointment. I want to go. I'm like, this ain't the movies. <laughs> we, go to the, we go to the doctor. doctor. I swear, this doctor says, he's Dave, you're in good shape. He said, whatever you're doing, keep it up. You can do another 50 years on this earth. I said, cool. It's amazing that when you've been with a woman for so long, that any kind of news can give you the courage to think about leaving. <laughs> I heard 50 more years, I looked at my wife and went, you hear this? I can walk the fuck out of here with this blood pressure I got. <laughs> I'm in shape enough to start over, you understand? <laughs> Let's see, look, some of y'all look at me like, Dave, I wanna leave too. <laughs> but you can't, cause your triglycerides ain't in order. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> you gonna walk out on somebody, you borderline diabetic, huh? <laughs> you a Snickers away from losing a foot. <laughs> Talk about I'm leaving. <laughs> they got the club, I'm back. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> but you got.
got to do what you got to do to keep your house happy. Because I got a good house. My shit is great. So I got to do what I got to do to keep them happy. One of the things that you do when you marry is you have to do things you don't want to do sometimes. And one of the big things is that at my house is what we do is movie night. <laughs> movie night is when, this is movie night. Movie night is when you got to watch a movie with your wife or your girl or whatever you're doing. And basically it's some shit you don't want to see. <laughs> but you got to do it, you know what I'm saying? Because it keeps the peace, you understand? And the thing about it is, you got to start the movie at 7.30. Because if you started any later than that, she's going to fall asleep. <laughs> then I'm left up watching Eat, Love, Ass, whatever the hell. <laughs> this, this, this is movie night in everybody's house all the way around the country, I promise. thirsty. <laughs> what? I'm just saying, if you was going downstairs, <laughs> maybe you could bring me some water because you thirsty. <laughs> Want me to go downstairs? Did you want me to go downstairs? Say, David, go downstairs, and we got to do this back and forth. Why, why, why you got to talk to me like this? Why you got to breathe? Why you got to breathe? <laughs> you know what, David? Never mind. Just forget it. Just watch a movie. I don't want to see this movie. <laughs> Fine. You know what? I'll just be parched. Never mind. Why you go? Because I want ass at the end of the night. That's why. Because you gotta understand something. When you marry, the only thing you have left is the possibilities of some ass at the end of the night. But in order to qualify for the ass, you gotta be good all day to walk in the room with a 50-50 shot. You understand? So I go. Cussing all the way down and say, I swear to God, I don't know what the fuck, I'm gonna get your Jesus. I'm gonna put a water cooler next to your bed, I swear to God. <laughs> you get the water, you come back upstairs, and on the wall is all the pictures of your life. The day you met, when you got married, kids. And then when you get to the top, you don't resent her as much as you did going down. <laughs> so you think to yourself, I'm gonna try to salvage this night, get my attitude to go up together, maybe I can have some ass. You turn the corner, hand her the water, and there she is. <laughs> Mother of ass, you know what I mean? Let me tell you, let me tell you the hardest part about being married for me. This is the hardest part. Is having to pretend like I give a damn. <laughs> I feel you, sir. <laughs> about half the shit she talking about. <laughs> you don't all, it's unfair to us for you to drag us into these conversations that you know we don't care about. I'm downstairs, my wife, David, I got something I want to ask you. Come up here. I'm like, all right. Ah. <laughs> Come in. Get upstairs. She's like, I'm having lunch with Shannon. It's her birthday, and I bought these necklaces. And I'm wondering, which one do you think she'll like? And I'm thinking to myself, I don't give a fuck. But I can't say that. Because I want some ass at the end of the night. So I'm forced to pretend to care. Oh. 
I like the detail in this one. <laughs> everybody, everybody always says this too. Everybody goes, oh, you know, it's gonna get better. Marriage gets better with time. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if it gets better or if it just gets different. Let me tell you what I mean. My parents been married 37 years. You understand? Both of them retire now. My mother watches crime TV all day. <laughs> Forensic files, snap, another, all, all the time. She got conspiracy theory mind now. You know what I'm saying? Like if she go outside and smell something, she's like, ooh, you smell that? I wonder if Miss Jones got bodies next door. Stop watching these shows. My father, who is a retired mechanical engineer, Bought, let's just say it's a Jiffy Lube, just so you know what I'm talking about. It's, it's an it's a auto shop, a Jiffy Lube, like three miles from the house. He bought this just so he'll have some place to go. <laughs> so he don't have to be at home with her. You understand? $250,000 he spent to have a place to go. <laughs> and they're not working in this garage. They're not doing anything. They're sitting around in, in a circle smoking weed. <laughs> <laughs> trying to figure out where it all went wrong. That's what they do. I've seen people pull up to my father's business and go, we want to get oil changed. He's like, we're not here for that. Get your ass on, let's go. Keep it moving. <laughs> so I'm down there one day sitting in the circle with them, also trying to figure out where it all went wrong. And my mother calls and this is what she says. She goes, I was driving and I pushed the brakes. They went all the way to the floor. What you do? He said, what? She said, I was driving, my brakes went out on my car. What you do? And he was like, I, man, I don't, maybe the brake pads, what I don't, what do you, when I get home, I look at it. What are you talking about? This is what she said. She said, how easy is it to cut a brake line? <laughs> Let me tell you something. Me and my wife, when we argue, we argue about who ate the last of the cheesecake. <laughs> who deleted whose program off the DVR? This woman is accusing this man of attempted murder. <laughs> when you've been with somebody so long that you think it might be a chance that he'll cut your brake lines in order to collect insurance money, it's time for you to get the fuck off. You understand? <laughs> How many parents in the house? Let me hear the parents. You can always tell parents, you got that we're free look. Somebody came to watch the children. I got two kids. I got uh, two girls, they're six and eight now. Anna, Anna Grace and Ashlyn. It's a trip, like when you have children that young, the most precious thing they can give you is silence. <laughs> People who ain't got kids, you don't get it. People with kids, you know what I'm talking about. But the moment it get quiet, that's when you realize something wrong, something wrong. Shouldn't be quiet in here with these two. And that's when Ashlyn, my six-year-old, who naked all the time, I don't know why. She come out the back, don't come in the living room, okay, and leave. <laughs> you ever feel that panic set in? Like, what the hell is going on in the living room? I go in there, they got sandwich baggies of water that they done filled up and laid across the couch. I'm like, what are y'all doing? We making a water bed. No the hell you not. <laughs> you, ever, you, you ever be so angry you can't complete a thought? You ever be, wait, let, shut up. Wait, let, everybody go to bed. Everybody go to bed. That's the thing about being a parent. You got the right to shut the house down whenever you get ready. It don't matter what time it is, you understand? It's two o'clock, I don't give a damn. Everybody go to bed. They always into something, always. We buy a vino bath wash. You know what that is, right? It's like $9 a bottle. It ain't cheap. You get a lifetime of zest for $9. <laughs> it's quiet. I know it's a problem. So I go upstairs. Both of them then took out a brand new bottle, squeezed it all over the floor. Both of them up there naked, skating. Both of them just. You ever can't believe what you're looking at? You're like, what? What are, what are you doing? Right? 
and they got a name for every game. We playing skater. <laughs> no the hell you not. Everybody go to bed. Everybody go to bed. I can't, you know, <laughs> it was so funny. I can't even explain my kid. Like, when you have kids, it's a trip. Like, you try to lecture them. You try, these people don't listen. That, you know, matter of fact, I can't even explain it to you. I can show you. You think I'm making this shit up. I can show you better than I can tell you. Check this out. Where the fuck are you? What? What's up, everybody? I'm David Arnold, and this is my blog for today. Lecturing your kids. Are they really listening, or do they even give a damn? Let's see what happened when I tried to talk to mine. My wife is upset with the kids because they've been driving her crazy, and now she's asked me to go in there and talk to them. So I'm about to go in here and do a daddy speech. Yes. See how much they're respecting them. out of control now. And I didn't know that until the fish died. All right, let me, let me tell you what happened. First of all, I didn't kill about 38 goldfish in about a month. I don't know what's happening, I'm just killing the fish. And like any good father, I replaced the fish and lied to the child, you know what I'm saying? But I don't really care, so I'll replace the fish this big with one this big. And kids catch everything. My daughter's like, hey, these fish is getting smaller. <laughs> You know, you lie to your kids. Yeah, that's what happens when they don't eat. Just go to bed. <laughs> Finally, she brought home a gray and white goldfish that she got at the carnival. Called him Pinky Pandy. Pinky Pandy succumbed to the same fate as them other 38 goldfish. <laughs> this time, I couldn't replace it, so I had to have a real conversation with my daughter, right? <laughs> so I'm like, Ashley, I need to talk to you. Uh, um, Pinky Pandy didn't make it. <laughs> she like, 
what, what were you talking about? I said, Pinky Pandy is dead. When I tell you this little girl turned into a black woman at a funeral in Louisiana, <laughs> she wow! Pinky! Don't touch me, Daddy, don't touch me! Take me a stand, Jesus, take me a stand! And for like 30 seconds, you feel bad. But like two minutes of this, you're like, all right, stop the shit, all right? It's a 16 cent goldfish. I need you to clean it up. <laughs> My kids are true. Anna Grace, Anna Grace is, Anna Grace is lying now. But she tell the kind of lies that make me think something wrong with her. <laughs> like she don't even try to lie. You know what I mean? Like when I lied when I was a kid, I rehearsed the lie. I focused on the lie. I had to believe it in order for my parents to believe it. She does none of this preparation. It's like she saw me doing something around the house and went, he's an idiot. I can tell him anything I want to. The other day, I swear, the other day, I'm like, hey, hey, uh, you know you forget your kid's name. Hey, the one with the shoe, come here, come here. and crafts, you know, and let's be, all you, when your kids bring home something, let's just be honest, some of it is terrible, all right, but they be proud, like, oh, look, daddy, I'm like, oh, hey, what's this? That's an elephant, and you're thinking, no, the hell it's not, and if this school I'm paying thousands to send you to, got you thinking this is an elephant, I need my money back, you understand? <laughs> but you got to put it on the wall, something about their self-esteem, I don't know, whatever. Then the question becomes, how long am I obligated to keep this on the wall? Because when I look at it now, it's messing with my self-esteem. You understand? <laughs> Finally, I couldn't take it no more. So I took it down and threw it away, and she caught me. I, have you ever been caught throwing your children's creation away? It's the most uncomfortable. Because at that moment, you become the child, and they are the parent. I turned around, Anna Grace was standing there. I went, oh, hey, hey. Did you just throw my picture away? <laughs> I said no. <laughs> she said, I just saw you. I said, no, you didn't. <laughs> she, looked, she looked at me and went, everybody go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> my wife don't think I discipline my kids the way she think I should. And you gotta understand, like me, Kevin, Chris, Boris, all of us had kids at the same time. They had boys and girls, I had all girls. They love talking trash to me about the fact that I got girls. But this is what you need to understand. My biggest fear is being sent to the nursing home. <laughs> Let me tell you something right now, all right? Girls take care of their daddy. Boys, these niggas going to the nursing home. All of them. I'm not going to the nursing home. Now my wife, she going to the nursing home. We already know she going. We prepared for it. I'll never forget the day that Anna Grace decided she was going to the nursing home. They in there argued over a popsicle, I swear to God. And my wife's like, Anna Grace, you can't have no popsicle. Said, I want one. Said, you can't have no popsicle. Most of the time, Anna Grace would fall out, right? This time, she collected herself with a confidence I had never seen. And looked at my wife and went, really? I couldn't walk out and said, oh, damn. 
Did you see what just happened here? She said, what? I said, you're going to the goddamn nursing home. She said, what are you talking? I said, you should have gave her the popsicle. She's like, you out your mind. I said, I'm gonna tell you right now, when the mean and white come to drag your ass out of here 50 years from now, you'll be like, oh, David, help me. But like, no woman, she gave me the popsicle in 2013. I got the popsicle, you understand? I'm like, here you go, Anna Grace. You remember who gave you the popsicle, here. I don't mess with these kids. I don't, you gotta know your kids' limitations. You gotta know what your kids can do and what they can't. You understand? My wife don't get that yet. The other day, she said, oh, I'm taking the kids to church. I'm like, Julie, these kids ain't in church shape. <laughs> don't be trying to take these kids out in public at the church. <laughs> They'll be fine, right? So she's my wife Catholic, so she takes them to the Catholic church. You know, you go and you do your little prayer or whatever, and he put his hand up to bless you. Right, Ashlyn gives him a high five. Pow! <laughs> my wife is mortified. Oh, ah, uh, ah, uh, oh my God, ah! Uh. She's dragging both of them out. Anna Gray screaming, I wanna give him a high five too! <laughs> she come back mortified. I'm like, I told you, keep your ass these, these kids in the house. We go through it about everything. Anna Grace in second grade. And we doing homework now. And, I, and, and I'm gonna be honest with you, me and my wife, we ain't good at the homework. We just ain't got no patience to see nobody through one sitting of homework. Because at any moment, one of us is gonna snap and the other one got to come in there and relieve them like a tag team wrestling team before we kill this child. You understand? Because I'll be in my office working, I just hear my wife lose it. Anna Grace, you need to focus! That's when I walk in the meeting like, all right, let's go, tap out, tap out. Come on, tap out, you're scaring the baby, tap out. Then I take over like, <laughs> like I'm gonna be any better, right? I'm like, Anna Grace, listen. What's two plus three? She say five, I said, very good. Now what's three plus two? She said, I don't know. <laughs> what, do you, what do you mean you don't know? She said, well, that's different. I said, it's not different, it's the same. She said, no, it's not. I said, how is it different? She said, this is two and three. I said, yeah. She said, that's three and two. I said, yeah. She said, is that different or is that the same? I said, <laughs> okay, it's different, but it's the same. She said, it's not the same. I said, Anna Grace, it's the same. My wife walked in and said, come on, let's go, tap out, tap out. Come on, you're scaring the baby, tap out. Now me and, my, me and my wife in the kitchen, we arguing, because I'm mad that she done tapped me out in my house, right? I'm like, listen, woman, you don't tap me out in my house. She said you was yelling at the baby. I said I wasn't yelling, I was talking loud. She said talking loud and yelling is the same. I said it's not the same, it's different. My daughter walked in and said, daddy, it's the same. Come on, tap out, you scared of me. Tap out. I'm David Allen, man. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.